FTX tried to hide billions of dollars in fraud, and now their ex-CEO, Sam Bankman-Fried, is trying to convince everyone it was an accident. He isn't such a bad guy. He just got in over his head. And already there are financial commentators like Kevin O'Leary willing to vouch for him. I just think he's a very interesting individual. Over time, we'll peel this onion, find out what happened. I don't think that guy has a, an evil bone in his body. Now, it may not surprise you, but Kevin O'Leary is a paid spokesman for FTX. But even unpaid sources have parroted his claims. Take, for instance, the New York Times. They quote SBF saying he was just distracted, and that's why FTX fell apart. Quote, had I been a bit more concentrated, that would have allowed me to catch on to what was going on on the risk side. That's right, guys. If he only hadn't played League of Legends, he might have noticed he was stealing customer money. Now, of course, the New York Times was roasted for their uncritical take on Sam, as was Kevin O'Leary. But even respected financial journalists that I personally like, like Matt Levine of Bloomberg, have recently floated theories around that maybe this is fraud, but maybe not. Quote, I don't want to minimize the likelihood of intentional fraud and theft, but I want to say that the story of FTX also reads like what would happen if you and a few college friends set up a gigantic international financial exchange. Your friends are traders and engineers, not accountants and compliance officers. They're running a huge exchange and are too busy for paperwork. They move fast and break things. Now, stories like that, to me, leave me wondering, well, was this fraud at all? Or was it just a couple of college grads who didn't know the value of an accountant? Could be either one, right? And I want to address this, not because anyone in the media specifically believes that Sam isn't a fraudster, besides Kevin O'Leary probably, because of course there are plenty of legal reasons not to explicitly call someone a fraud. But I still think it's relevant to address these ideas and narratives either way, because you can be certain this is going to be SBF's defense. He may have been dumb, he may have been negligent, he may have made some mistakes, but he isn't a criminal. He already came out and said it once. I effed up twice. But instead of mentioning fraud, he says it's because of poor internal labeling that FTX fell apart, which I mislabel things all the time. And in a way, that's a compelling, simple explanation. Don't attribute to malice what you can attribute to stupidity. Or in this case, don't attribute to fraud what you can attribute to a polycule of 20-year-olds in the Bahamas getting in over their heads. That is basically what he wants you to believe. And so I'm here to answer that question. Could it possibly be that FTX is just a story of negligence? Well, the short answer is no. And the long answer is hell no. Since FTX unraveled, I've been speaking to Alameda insiders, FTX insiders, even people who caught out FTX months ago, like short seller Mark Cahotis. And the one thing I'm positive of after all of it is that Sam is probably the greatest con man of our generation. The only real question I have is why did it take us so long to find this out? Now, as I share the evidence that supports this claim, bear in mind, compiling a complete postmortem on FTX is admittingly difficult. A paper shredder leaves behind better evidence than Sam Bankman fraud. Sorry, I mean freed. Well, not freed for long. He's going to probably be in jail soon. But until that sweet day arrives, just understand that I don't have the full story yet. Nobody does. Even the people who have full access to the back end evidence are still puzzled. In fact, the main person tasked with handling the FTX bankruptcy process also handled Enron, which is the definition of complicated corporate fraud. So you'd think it'd be no big deal, right? Nope. FTX is worse than Enron. Quote, never in my career have I seen such a complete failure of corporate controls. Not only that, he says that everything he got from SBF in the way of evidence, he has, quote, no confidence in, which, uh, you know, isn't great. This is probably because A, Sam has lied, and B, it sounds like everything in his empire was a mess. Allegedly, FTX was approving expenses with, quote, personalized emojis, and that Sam was communicating with disappearing messages that were set to auto-delete after, quote, a short period of time. Not only that, Sam encouraged employees to do the same. So understand that we don't have a full picture of what happened yet, in part because, well, they deliberately avoided leaving one. And I would actually point to this as the first piece of evidence of fraud. You don't show up to the scene of a crime with billions missing and find out all the evidence is destroyed and say, oh darn, maybe they accidentally torched it. No, that in of itself is suspicious. And deleting your text messages and encouraging your employees to do the same, that just screams that you're hiding something. But even though they didn't leave us much to go on, there's still tons of breadcrumbs that lead us to the same conclusion. For example, take the corporate structure of FTX and all their subsidiaries. We've talked about this. It's incredibly complicated, but 
I'm supposed to believe that the guy who set this up is the same guy who didn't know it was wrong for him to take from one company and steal it? Uh, isn't this the same guy whose parents are both compliance lawyers, sticklers for the rules? You're telling me that guy doesn't understand what basic fraud is? Incidentally, this is actually why Kevin O'Leary thought this was such a safe bet. I'm a paid spokesperson to, uh, to FTX and a shareholder there too. And big advocate for Sam because he has two parents that are compliance lawyers. If there's ever a place I could be that I'm not gonna get in trouble, it's gonna be at FTX. Yikes. And yet, even after being defrauded, Kevin says given the chance, he'd bet on Sam again. If SPF knocked on your door again, and said, look, I failed in my last venture. Uh, I have a new crypto venture. I need money. Would you back him? That's a great question. No one's asked me yet. I think we can all admit, you, you can love him or hate him given what's happened, but he was one of the most brilliant traders in the crypto universe. He also built one of the most robust platforms. We used FTX actively. It was a very robust platform uh, that allowed us to get information on a compliant basis. So I really like what he built. Would you back him? The answer would be yes. Unbelievable. I don't understand how these people can't admit they were fooled by SBF and just end up making fools of themselves. Now, there's another part of this story I want to talk about, which was, of course, the revelation that FTX, the exchange, and Alameda Research, the trading firm, were actually sharing customer funds. And there's been some talk of, well, maybe this was just a lack of compliance or accounting. But I want to suggest to you that SBF was not lacking anything. He purposely and deliberately profited from the vague relationship between Alameda and FTX. And the first sign of this was when I spoke to an insider at Alameda. He told me that they would often use insider knowledge of the coins that were going to be listed on FTX, and then they would go buy those coins up knowing that it would pump in price when it was finally listed. In other words, an easy profit could be made. This, by the way, is similar to what happened on Coinbase, and three people were arrested for insider trading in that case. But unlike Coinbase, this wasn't rogue employees. This was Alameda itself doing this. So let me get this straight. If it was criminal when three individuals did it, what does it mean when an entire organization does it? I even asked the Alameda insider if they thought that it was criminal behavior, and they told me, quote, it was probably criminal in hindsight. Yeah, you know about the 2020 of hindsight. Sometimes you realize, wow, that was probably illegal. Now, this insider evidence is actually further validated by public reports that Alameda Research amassed swaths of tokens ahead of FTX saying it would list them, according to an analysis of public blockchain data. This is from the Wall Street Journal, and it just corroborates this insider testimony. There's insider trading going on at Alameda. So do you think someone... Sam, who is doing criminal activity, is going to want a bunch of accountants and compliance people sniffing around? No, they're gonna want criminals hanging around them. So with that said, and completely unrelated, guess who FTX chose as their chief regulatory officer? This guy, Dan Friedberg. Now Dan's past is very important because he used to work for Ultimate Bet, a poker site which got in a lot of trouble and has a very shady past for reasons we've explained before. Ultimate Bet got in trouble because they were giving some of their players a god mode that allowed them to see the other poker's players' cards, which would obviously be an advantage if you're trying to play poker. Wow. So Friedberg was working for Ultimate Bet during these god mode days. And although he was never charged with anything, there is leaked audio coming out from him conspiring to hide the owner of Ultimate Bet from facing any consequences from using it. Here's Russ Hamilton, the former owner of Ultimate Bet, who used God Mode and admits to making money with it, telling Friedberg that he wants to get out of this cheating scandal. I feel, and I, and I did take this money, and I'm not trying to make it right, Dan, so we gotta get that out of the way right, real quick, okay? So then Dan Friedberg replies to Russ that maybe they should just blame it all on a third party consultant and say that was who used the God mode on their website instead of Russ himself. I think for the public, it just has to be former consultant to the company, uh, took advantage of a server flaw by hacking in the client, been able to identify exactly when sometimes he played with it, sometimes he played without it. Sometimes he intentionally won and sometimes he intentionally lost. Very erratic play. 
but we've been able to identify at the times when the tool was up and they're not when it's naturally And what you could also say is that the tool was originally set for a 15 minute delay and he hacked, he hacked it to a, a, to, oh, a real yeah, time. to a real time. You no, can. I that's what we do. So this is the guy they hired at FTX as their chief regulatory officer, a guy who once conspired to hide his cheating boss. And of course, there are more red flags about the relationship between FTX and Alameda. You might assume that like, okay, if it was negligence, maybe everyone inside the organization was just sharing information with everyone. There was, there was no walls in place, right? And that's what created the conflicts of interest. But that doesn't match with what we've heard. I personally have spoken to FTX insiders who said they were blindsided by the collapse. They didn't know anything. The Wall Street Journal also reports that FTX employees were completely in the dark, which corroborates that. So FTX employees had no idea what was going on at Alameda. Meanwhile, the Alameda employees, on the other hand, knew exactly what was going on at FTX. They had back-end access. So this relationship wasn't uncontrolled. It was one-sided. Back to the God Mode analogy, it was almost as if they specifically set up their crypto exchange to be pilfered by their traders without anyone knowing. Almost like they had a back door. Oh, oh yeah, they, they did end up building a back door. I, I forgot their CTO built a back door to avoid triggering red flags. See, it's hard to call things like this accidents or negligence. It's literally designed to be hidden. Alameda had a one-way window into FTX to steal whatever they wanted from client funds. And I do mean steal, not misappropriate, not negligently lose, steal. But unbelievably, the way it's quoted in like the New York Times, you'd think this was some kind of loan they took out. A margin position, it's called. But we know now it wasn't a margin position. Alameda apparently had a secret exemption from certain aspects of FTX.com's auto liquidation protocol, according to their new CEO. So this large margin position isn't a margin position at all because they could never be liquidated. And I'm sure Dan Friedberg might be somewhere on a call trying to figure out how to blame a rogue employee on this secret exemption. But let's be honest with ourselves. Alameda knew what they were doing was criminal. That's why they call it a secret exemption. And they were even willing to lie about it to keep it a secret. Alameda CEO, Caroline Ellison, denied special access to Bloomberg News saying, we definitely have a Chinese wall in terms of information sharing to ensure that no one at Alameda would get customer information from FTX or any sort of special treatment from FTX. But obviously this was a lie. Here, Sam Bankman-Fried lying too. Quote, Alameda is a wholly separate entity. Well, we know that isn't true either. Looking back, it was obvious because even when you'd wire them money to FTX, the international wiring instructions were to Alameda Research. Not exactly separate. And so after finding all of this out, I spoke to Mark Cahotis, who called out SBF as a fraud much earlier than almost anyone else. And I asked him his thoughts and he said, this was all obvious a mile away. I knew something was wrong a year ago because everything this guy said, and you can play all his interviews back, nothing added up. You know, you know nothing added up. If, if people ask me a question, I will give them an answer or say, I don't know. I won't talk in a figure eight. You know, I, I won't answer a question with a non-answer again and again and again. Nothing this guy said has ever made a lick of sense. And if he would have come to my office looking for money, I would have told him to hit the bricks because nothing added. I mean, f they didn't even figure out that his accountant's address was somewhere in the metaverse. <laughs> I mean, at, at a minimum, you check out who the guy's auditor is and say, who's right. your auditor? Oh, my auditor's name is, is the pep boy, Manny, Mo, and Jack. Okay, what's his address? somewhere in the metaverse. Is this a joke? No, I'm being serious. Now I know what you're thinking. Surely that can't be true that the auditor of FTX was located in the metaverse, but checking their official bankruptcy filings, that is the case. And now because no one looked into it, FTX owes $3.1 billion to its top 50 creditors alone. And I guess if they have complaints, they can go to the metaverse and ask about it. I'm just kidding. Well, Kind of. I actually don't think they probably take complaints in the metaverse. Either way, the question of was Sam Bankman freed a fraud is not much of a question at all. The real question is why did so few people catch on early and why didn't the media catch on sooner? 
I'm not sure. We can speculate maybe it was because of political donations or this whole story about effective altruism. But ultimately, what I know for sure is that people like Marco Hodes, they weren't silent. He says he took it to journalists before the crash to see if they'd do anything, and they said no. I went to Bloomberg with my pal who I was working on this thing with, and we laid it out to five crypto, five ladies on the crypto team, and they passed, and they said it would be too much work, we'd lose access, it's bad for business, right? They'd hang up on us if we asked these questions. Well, at least I had the questions. Wait, Bloomberg a denied firm. a story with you because they thought it would lose them access and it was too much work? Yes, 100%. When? When did this happen? This happened in July. This happened in early July. They had everything. They had everything. Wow. They, 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 they also said, but I didn't want anyone fired. I didn't want anyone fired, so I didn't get this. They said it was bad for business i.e. advertising. You're kidding. So so they admit their conflict of interest with advertisers in the crypto space. Yes. Now, this is pretty shocking allegations. So I did want to reach out to Bloomberg for comment to see if uh, they wanted to respond to this. And here's what they said. 